guys. Uh, a miracle happened last night, and narrowly, and I mean narrowly, a tragedy of the death of a mother and her young infant was avoided right here where I live. Uh, I'm going to try to give a little lesson here. I was directly involved in it. And had I not been here last night and not pushed the issue that I'm going to tell you about so vigorously, this mother and her infant would be dead. They would have died last night. All right. Last night, my wife and I, we were getting ready for bed. Excuse me, I'm suffering some throat issues, so I'm going to be drinking some water here throughout probably. Last night, my wife and I were getting ready to go to sleep. Uh, we had our uh, clothes off and we're in our sleeping attire. And I started smelling smoke. And we live on the fourth floor of this big gated apartment community. Uh, we have guards out here. Uh, it's, it's okay for Colombian standards. It's pretty nice. And I, was, I told my wife, I said, well, call down to the front guard desk and tell them to get a guard over here to look. And I waited a few minutes. Um, and I was like, well, the hell with this. I put my clothes on and went to the guard desk and started yelling at the guard, get somebody the hell over there right now. Pronto, arriba, andale, arriba, andale, pronto, pronto. Yelling at the top of my voice. And then a guard speed walking over here. The guard comes around. He's got his little camera phone flashlight thing in. He's shining. And we go on to the outside and we deduce it's coming from the first floor. We live on the fourth floor. It was the first floor, uh, ground level directly under us. Uh, not directly under us, but a few floors under us. And I stayed in a side stairwell. And I'm probably going to film this so you guys can get the logist of it. Uh, after listening to the story here, uh, the guard told me, I thought the guard had got the, the lady to the door and had spoke with her. And I was under the misguided impression that she had left something on on the stove and she was cutting it off. And, it, and my Spanish is not great, but I was like, todos bien aquí, todos bien, no problemos, no más. It was, see, sí, todos bien aquí, no problemos, todos bueno, buenas noches, he tells me, have a good night. I come back up here and not 45 seconds later, as I get back in the house, I realize more smoke and uh, burn smell is up in our condo here. So I told my wife, I said, Please get your clothes on now, we're going down. And I said, call that guard desk and tell him to get that guy's ass back over here. Turns out he didn't even talk to the person. He hit the buzzer one quick time. The lady didn't come to the door. He knew smoke was coming out from her front door. And he chose to just ignore it and tell me to have a good night, that everything was great and go on to sleep. Had I listened to him, folks, that infant and that mother would be dead now, what a way for this lady's family and everybody to have Christmas, uh, to face the Christmas season. Wouldn't that be a hell of a thing? So anyway, got back up here, told my wife, we need to beeline it down. I, she was yelling at the guard, you get somebody back over here now. 
We got downstairs. He got the lady to the front door, which is when I found out he never got the lady to the door the first time, some five or eight minutes possibly before. And uh, when she opened that door, smoke was bellowing out uh, like you would see uh, on a YouTube video where somebody responds and films a house fire. It was that bad. Uh, she had burned something on the stove, and she's evidently a young mother. Uh, well, she's a young mother. And she was just wore out and dozed off. And how many people have made mistakes like that? We keep drilling in people. Watch it. Watch what you're doing. Watch what you're doing. Uh, but the thing that had got me was... The guard did not even ask the lady, are you okay? Is your baby okay? He just stood there stupidly and took a picture of the smoke bellowing out her fucking door. And I, I got to thinking about that, and I got really pissed off about that. I'm, I'm still angry about that. So this morning, the day front desk guy, they're typically the one that are running the guards around here, I gave him the one too, and everybody that knows me, when you get to one two, it ain't a good thing to be on the receiving end of. I've received it a lot in my life, but I damn sure know how to give it out. And I gave one out this morning. So, uh, Joe and I this morning, um, uh, got in touch with the administrator through text message, WhatsApp, I believe. And he responded back, well, I'm going to have a strong talk with this woman and tell people they got to watch it. And I one damn thing about uh, the people around here being forced to pay guards that won't even ask if they're okay uh, when they've got a smoke fire in their home and could have died. Too ignorant and stupid or satanically heart-driven that they don't even have the decency, uh, number one, to cover up somebody uh, dying inside their home and just walking off nonchalantly. And then when pushed to bear by me and the door gets open, not even asking, are you okay? Didn't even have the decency to do that. And my wife came up here and got on her hands and knees after this. And, and I want everybody, and especially if you're a Colombian, to really take heed to this. My wife prayed to the Lord God and gave thanks that I, an American, was here that day and that night and able to save that mother and that infant because there are no Colombians saving each other. They will just sit and let each other die. And that's the difference. That's the difference now between the United States, which is becoming less of the United States, but that's the difference between the United States people, U.S. people, and people everywhere else in the world. Everywhere else in the world, they'll sit there while their neighbor dies. Everywhere. That is the biggest thing that separates a U.S. American from the rest of the pack on this earth. There's none that compare to our hearts, and we're losing that. And I damn well refuse to, to lose it. I told another neighbor this morning, if I smelled this coming from your house, and he happens to have a sizable dog that's getting bigger and going to be able to play with Rocky later, uh, I told him, I said, if I smell this coming from your house, I kick your door in, <coughs> bust your patio windows out, and get, even if you weren't there and get your dog out of the house, he's like, thank you, thank you. Who wouldn't be? 
And I also expressed, I have the one true God, the king of all the kings. So I really don't give a damn about getting drug into court, hesitating to kick somebody's door in if I, I feel somebody needs the help. Uh, uh, next time, if it's something really bad like that, I'll kick a door in, try to extinguish the fire. And then if they want to take me to court, they can take me to court. That, that will be so second, third, and ten millionth down the list of my thought processes. It'll make your head spin. No more. No more. Uh, I, I will never rely on somebody that tells me, let me do my job. And I will never, ever uh, be the guy that's sitting back. Well, let me just wait and let them handle this. There's, you can't do that in this world today. You cannot sit back and wait for the other guy or the other woman uh, to handle something. If something is wrong, you better step up and you better step up at the moment. I should have stepped up. See, that woman's not downstairs right now. She could be at the hospital with that infant. See, that little baby couldn't handle the smoke that she... That she she took in, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I should have kicked that fucking door in and been in there lickety split, and I didn't do it, and never again, never again, that will never happen again, and uh, it's just a Christmas message, it's a Christmas gift, this is my gift to everybody, I, I was able to be in a Christmas miracle, I thank God I was there because nobody else was going to help. There was no Calvary. It was just me. And uh, it would have been Job too, but he got a little sick yesterday on his stomach and he went, went to sleep about 7.30. And he, he goes to sleep early anyway. He's a, he's a boxer. He don't stay up all damn night, you know, like other kids. Uh but I looked at my wife when we had went down together the second time, and I said, if I tell you to go get Joseph, run like the wind. Get him down here. There's no time for shoes, no time for nothing. Tell him, come now, now, because we're going to have to kick his door in. So, and she would have done it. She would have done it in a split second. So it was just a horrible accident that happened last night uh, with, a, with a lot of satanic activity around it by people that are charged to protect us around here that are satanically driven by ignorance, uh, no empathy towards their fellow man, or whatever the reason is, but I know it's satanic. And we're very thankful. I'm, I'm going to do this in front of you all, Lord. I thank you. Thank you so much. And I pray that that baby is okay, Lord. We, I, and I know, and I'm asking, Lord, all the people that watch this YouTube channel, please pray for that little infant baby in Christ's precious name. Please help them, Lord. Amen. Uh, that really rattled me when she come up out of there with that infant baby. It really rattled me. And the situation rattled me with nobody not only willing to help, but not wanting anyone else to help. And never again, never again with me. I won't hesitate for a second. I will not hesitate for a second. I will take the law into my own hands. I will take the administration in my own hands. I will take punishment in my own hands. I'll, I'll take it all in my own hands. Uh, I'm, I'm, if I go to prison, how long am I going to be in there?
think about that. And that much more, I'll appreciate heaven. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to do right or as right as I can while I'm here, calling out bad things, uh, praising on the good and the wonderful things, uh, crying over what needs to be cried over, fighting over what needs to be fought over, and just trying to do the right thing because the older I'm getting, uh, when I was younger, there were a lot of people that would stand up and do the right thing. And those people are just dying off. They are dying off. And in my walk in life now, I'm the only one walking that I can depend on to do the right thing. Uh, so my advice to you guys, if it, if it, quacks like a duck and swims like a duck, treat it like a duck and do what you need to do accordingly. Uh, blessings, everybody. I hope and pray if you need a miracle this Christmas that, that you get it. I really, really do. And blessings to everybody. Thanks for watching our YouTube. Our subscribers have shot up. We're a little over 7,000 now. And I just want to say we appreciate each and every single one of you. And we wish God's blessings for good things and tidings of good joy during this holiday season.